I've already diagnosed this car. I've already made a video. I already know what's wrong with it. I want to point out before you start watching this video that this car seems like it has an immobilizer problem. The car starts and dies, but it does not have an immobilizer problem. The problem is a communication problem between the instrument cluster and the engine computer. If you have this type of problem and you do an immobilizer delete, the car will then run, but you'll still be left with a ton of problems relating to the communication between the instrument cluster and the other computers. And the reason is, uh, one thing for instance, the oil pressure light was flashing on the instrument cluster. Do you want to live with all these problems on the car that are related to the communication problem? If you do an immobilizer delete, your car will then run, but you're still left with all those other problems re relating to communication between the instrument cluster and, and the other computers on the car. Because the problem is the data bus network is down. So uh, all the communication is supposed to happen between the ABS module, engine computer, airbag module, and instrument cluster are all off the system. So any, anything that requires that communication is going to be a malfunction, and it's going to be really annoying to drive the car. So before you do your immobilizer delete, you've got to realize that it might be better to actually fix the car rather than do the immobilizer delete. Now, you could do the immobilizer delete and then fix the car later, sure. That way you can at least drive the car in the meantime. But I just wanted to point out before you watch this video that if you do immobilizer delete on this car, you're going to be left with a whole lot of other problems that might not make the car very nice to drive. So take that into account when you do an immobilizer delete. Now, on to our scheduled programming. We have here a 2003 Volkswagen Golf. It's a 1.9 liter TDI ALH engine. And the customer brought it to me for a uh, no start problem. It uh, seems like an immobilizer issue, but uh, the immobil I have done some basic checks, by the way. The immobilizer light is not flashing. Um, let me get this steering wheel wiggled here. The immobilizer light not flashing. And when you start it, it starts up, but immediately dies. One more time. No immobilizer light flashing. So uh, I have scanned it for trouble codes, but that's been about a week ago. I will uh, scan it again so we can start fresh. Okay, I want to point out <clears throat> that even though this has an aftermarket radio, our light is green there on the uh, FAGCOM. If it had the aftermarket radio problem, that light would probably be red. So that's not our issue here. Uh, I'm going to do an auto scan. Let me get the car on. Auto scan. Okay, the auto scan has completed on this car. And we have engine start blocked by immobilizer. Missing message from instrument cluster. Powertrain data bus failure intermittent. Powertrain data bus missing message from ABS controller. Throttle pedal positioning sensor. A couple of those. And then let me scroll down. And the instrument cluster is the next unit to pop up. I find that unusual because it's address 17 and I'm pretty sure the airbag computer and the ABS computer are higher up. They should be in there between there, but inside the instrument cluster we have engine control unit, not currently testable, powertrain data bus, faulty, central control module for central convenience, no communications, and radio, no communications, uh, the radio trouble code, obviously, that's because the, uh, it's got an aftermarket radio. But um, then we have a CAN gateway with powertrain data bus faulty, Central control module for central convenience, no communication, radio, no communications. But once again, we have no ABS unit communicating, and we have no airbag module communicating. I wasn't paying a lot of attention in there. Let's see if those lights are on. And ABS light is on, airbag light's on. Um, so the instrument cluster probably has those lights on because this, the, those two modules aren't communicating. So let's get a schematic printed up. I am going to go ahead and clear these trouble codes because we've been, this car's been sitting for about a week and the battery went dead. And uh, I know they say not to clear trouble codes, but usually I find that's for lean related trouble codes or misfire related trouble codes. 
I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to clear these. Um, and some of these we might have induced by the battery being low. And like I said, we've been tinkering with it a little bit. We've had the engine computer unplugged at certain times. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clear all of them. Okay, I, while we're waiting on the codes to clear, I printed a, a schematic. And this is, it says ABS control module, but this is actually the communication data bus. Uh, all the communication networks on the car. So we start here, this is the OBD2 connector, of course powered by a fuse there and a fuse there. And uh, we should probably double check those fuses, but we know at least um, it's powered and scan tool, so uh, at least that's working. Ground's probably good. So we have uh, all these, except for this one, which is probably the K-line. This K-line goes to the Climatronic module with this car isn't equipped. It also goes to the radio, which are, of course, we have an aftermarket radio, so that shouldn't be doing anything. Then the K-line goes here, which is connected to the airbag module and to there. And it goes over here to some of these computers. But the K-line also comes down here to go to the transmission control module. This car is not equipped with the transmission control module. And uh, so that's what's on the K-line. So I'm going to scratch off which we could, that which we can ignore. Um, we might want to keep in the back of our mind that this could be a problem, but it's probably not since we are communicating. And then um, our airbag module doesn't seem to be communicating on the auto scan, so we have to pay attention there. And the ABS module also isn't communicating. Uh, this is pointing out that's the, that's the engine computer. And then transmission computer, this is a manual car, so not equipped. And then steering angle sensor, that would be for an ESP car, and this is also not equipped with that. So, it does seem that the airbag module is connected to the K-line right there. K-line also goes over to some of these modules also. So here, here's what I'm seeing. We have a commu communication on a K-line. Then we have a data bus network right here on the orange and black wires. And those orange and black wires are going to airbag and ABS and transmission computer not present. But they are branching off and going over here to the engine computer. And then also uh, this car is not equipped. So we have a K line, this data bus network, and then this data bu bus network. And these go to the comfort control module, memory seat control module, which this car is not equipped, door lock control module in door, passenger door lock control module, rear door lock control module. This car is a two door, so that's not equipped. And this is also a rear door, it's not equipped. So um, this data bus network goes down here to multifunction steering wheel control module. Once again, this car is equipped. And uh, that would also have a K line going to it, it looks like, also. So what we need to figure out is number one, why we have no ABS unit communicating on the scan tool, and why we have no airbag unit communicating on the scan tool. All our trouble codes seem to point towards the instrument cluster and since we have what seems to be an immobilizer problem, <coughs> meaning the car starts and dies, that means the engine computer probably is not receiving the signal from the instrument cluster, but since the immobilizer light isn't flashing, that would probably say the engine instrument cluster is receiving the signal from the key. So logic would have it, or at least a theory I would operate on, would be that the uh, instrument cluster isn't capable of communicating that signal to the engine computer. So uh, that's what we're going to go on for now. I'm going to do a little bit more research and uh, look at the schematic for the engine and look at the schematic for the instrument cluster and see where that leads me. As part of any diagnostic procedure, you want to go in and check fuses. You don't 
you don't want to spend a bunch of time trying to diagnose a problem, the high-tech method, and then find out it's just a fuse later. So you just go in automatically and check all the fuses. Obviously, they have some type of aftermarket stuff going on here. Obviously, I have the key on while I'm doing this. I'm looking for a fuse that lights up on one side but not the other. Not all fuses are powered under every circumstance, so a fuse with no power to it doesn't necessarily indicate a problem, but the diagnostic process has you check into the specific fuses that power circuits later. At least my diagnostic process does. Anybody with a reasonable diagnostic process probably does something the same, they just might not have structured it the way I have. But um, in all problems, I kind of check, for instance, these fuses right here for the lights, so if I turn on the lights, it, it lights it up. <clears throat> But, um, um, so part of my diagnostic process, as I'm saying, is to check all fuses. And then later on in the process, when I narrow something down to like an individual circuit, I'll find like one specific fuse and I'll go check that fuse specifically. And if that fuse isn't powered, then you know that's relating to your problem. But, um, <clears throat> don't see any fuses that are blown. Um, one thing that can be very confusing is when you have a problem like somebody takes a fuse out of the car and so when the fuse is missing, but you don't really have any way of knowing that until you get down to the specific fuse test. Um, there are places on Volkswagens and most cars where there are fuses that are missing and they're supposed to be missing and usually on a Volkswagen you can tell if it, if it has a prong there and there it's probably supposed to have a fuse. This one doesn't have a prong on this side. So obviously it's not supposed to have a fuse. So <clears throat> we'll move on. Okay, the codes have cleared and this is what has reoccurred. We have in the engine computer, engine start blocked by a mobilizer and powder, powertrain data bus failure. I don't know what to say about that. And then in the instrument cluster, we have powertrain data bus faulty. Central control module for con central convenience, no communication, and radio no communication. And then in the CAN gateway, once again we have no uh, communication with the ABS or the, or the airbag computer. And in the CAN gateway we have powertrain data bus faulty, central control module for central convenience, no communication, and radio no communication. So. If we have powertrain data bus faulty, as we said over here, there are three networks. The K-line, this network, and this network. So can we assume that this is the powertrain data bus network? And nothing there, nothing there. Only engine computer, ABS computer, and airbag computer. We are able to communicate with the engine computer, but that communication probably happens through the K-line. So is it possible this network right here is completely down, and so it's not able to communicate with the airbag computer, ABS computer, and engine computer? That would have to be the theory we're going to have to operate on right now. So we could take a scope and hook to there and see if that, um, that data bus network is working. See what the waveform is like on it. I guess we also have to be concerned that uh, the comfort control module is not communicating. And so all these networks input into the instrument cluster. So maybe we have a failed instrument cluster, or maybe we have a lack of power to the instrument cluster, or maybe we have a lack of ground to the instrument cluster, or a poor ground to the instrument cluster. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic for the instrument cluster. So here I'm looking at our instrument cluster wiring schematic, and I'm trying to see here. Here's the communication data lines, orange and black, orange and black. 
orange and black. All this is the instrument cluster, so it really looks like there's several different connections coming out of this that are orange and black. Um, don't know if separate sections of the instrument cluster communicate individually. Seems a little strange. But um, the instrument cluster is powered here and here. And this one also. No, it goes somewhere else. But so there's two separate power lines to it. So if one, obviously it's able to communicate. So, but maybe one of them's down, causing some systems of it not to work. And of course, the ground is right here on just one wire right there. So. In order to do anything, we'd have to pull the instrument cluster out, which I don't really want to do if I don't have to. Um, it's not hard to pull out, but uh, there might be an easy way, easier way to access the data communication lines. And I think the way to do that would be at the instrument computer right here. We already have the wiper cowl out, so we can access the computer right here. We just have to pull these cosmetic covers in order to scope to see if we have a, a communication um, waveform. But before we get out the scope, we are going to check fuse 11 for five, uh, fuse 11 to make sure it's not blown or missing, and fuse 15 to make sure it's not blown or missing. Interestingly enough, they're appropriately labeled as instruments, but the fuse 11 and 15 are right next to each other. It's always a good idea to also pull the fuse out and look inside, make sure there's no corrosion or problems on the uh, fuse. Let me get these out with my fingers here. And I don't know how well you can see that. Let me put some light on it. These fuses are very, very varnished or tarnished. Do you see that black stuff on there? I'm not saying that's causing a problem, but I've seen it cause a problem on, on fuses before. That causes a voltage... My light's too bright here. That causes a voltage drop in some situations. I'm not saying it's causing a problem on this one. It might be, but uh, I'm going to wire wheel that off. And uh, Can you see that? There it goes. You can see that brown stuff on there. <clears throat> We'll pull this other fuse out and do the same to it also. This one's terrible also. Matter of fact, this might even be our problem. Let me get the light here right. There it goes. See how brown that is? I'll go wire reel that off and we'll go from there. Here are two fuses that have been wire wheeled and I'm going to put them back into place. Be nice if that solved all our problems and we didn't have to go any do anything else, but I doubt it. We'll go ahead and start the engine to see if the cleaning off the corrosion off those fuse, fuses has solved our issue. If you learned anything from this video, click the like button. And be sure and visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. And if you uh, want to watch some more of my videos, there's one right there. Or can, you can try this one right here. And don't forget to subscribe right there. Thanks for watching.